night. Good morning. Welcome to another video. It is about 8.30 and I'm recording from my phone, low key from my watch, so I can't tell the time on my watch, which is why when I looked at the watch I couldn't tell you what the time was, but I do know how to read time on a watch, but it's a digital watch anyways. So we're getting all the way off the rails now. Point is, it is 8.30 in the morning. I am on the road again. On the road to Los Angeles, driving to LA. And I got two days up here of work to do. And I'm trying to get some content, trying to get some footage. I'm trying to make sure I make the most of this trip by documenting the stuff that happens while I'm out here, stuff I, 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 I do to make sure I eat right, make sure I eat vegan, um, and to make sure that I, um, I, I still feel good and healthy and well enough to run. Um, so I've got work tonight, like a long day. Uh -oh. All the way until about 7.30. And I'm trying to do a run in the morning. Like a 6 a.m. run. So we'll see how I get on. Um, like how early I get out from the hotel. The earlier I can get out, the longer I'm planning to go. I haven't really done anything long this week and there's a track near the hotel where I'm staying so I feel like I can I can kind of run pretty safely there so I'm planning to just do like a mile there at least if I can depending on time um, so hopefully do like four to five miles tomorrow or maybe five if I can fit a 10k in somehow, that would be amazing, but I don't think I'm fast enough or gonna wake up early enough to do that. So, yeah, and then I have work immediately after, starting at 7.30, trying to get into the office up there in LA. I'm gonna be in Culver City area, staying near, near my office where I go for work. I don't own it, I don't know why I said my office, but near where I go for employment to pay for my bills and stuff. Um, so I'll be staying near there. The track I'm running at is uh, West LA College. It's pretty nice, honestly. Like, has the same colors as UCLA. And honestly, growing up, I always wanted to go to UCLA. Fun fact, it's the only school I applied to that I didn't get into. It's probably better that I didn't get in and probably would have like been one of those situations where delusions of grandeur would have, would have told myself, yeah, I should go to UCLA and pay $70,000, $75,000 a year to go to this school and get this stupid bachelor's degree that is worth the same as a like $200 a semester school. So I don't know, maybe it was for the best I didn't get in, but Every time I run there, I, like, try to channel my UCLA, like, pursuit, young high school, high school Julio energy of, like, being a fucking sophomore, being a fucking junior, and, like, knowing I'm not good enough to play at UCLA, but wanting to be fit enough to try to, try to convince people I could. Um, so... I try to I try to channel that competitive competitive energy so that I, that way I feel like I'm like training in an element that makes me want to still be better than the people that aren't there. Uh, I know it's like it's motivating to try to beat yourself, but sometimes it's a little bit more motivating to to think about how maybe if you're training harder than everyone else around you, you're going to be able to beat more of the people around you. So that's one of those things I try to I try to stay focused on when I when I have these work trips that like no one's doing me any favors just because I have these work trips. 
Like, no one gives a fuck that I have to come up to Los Angeles twice a month, spend three hours of my life, 150 miles on my car, one way, you know? And, like, I lose sleep. I lose time with my family. I lose relaxation time and, like, decompressing time just so that I can try my best to pay what I can and my share of the bills. So, I feel like I can't let that sway me from still constantly pursuing becoming the best version of myself. And not that, like, my fitness or how well I play soccer is a barometer of how good of a person I am, but I do think it it gives me more happiness when I'm doing those things to do them better. So it allows for this time that I spend doing these things to feel more rewarding. Because I'm, I'm not struggling as much as I otherwise could be. Um... So, yeah, that's why, that's why crash I tried to... Crash reported ahead on I-5 north and half a mile. Uh-oh, crash. Shout out to uh, Highway Patrol. Couldn't it work? Having shit to do out here. Anyway. Um, oh, damn. It's over here on the right. Car might have flipped, honestly. Like they might have retreated from the canyon type beat. It's kind of scary. So this is why you gotta drive safe. Can't be, can't be driving too crazy. Imagine if that guy was in a marathon block, and now he's got to go and miss five weeks of training because he got super injured. He's got to pay for all that shit, medical problems. Marathon block's gonna be the last thing on his mind. So. This is the thing, like, if you pursue fitness, you start to think about other elements of your life that maybe are also damaging to your mental health that are going to be damaging to your fitness goals. Like, quick, quick sources of dopamine are not good for your brain in excess. Right? In excess. You need you need things that allow for decompression in amounts that bring you joy and rewards. And if those don't carry over into the elements where you're not having those moments, and instead it's becoming toxic and you're just pursuing those quick hits of dopamine, instead of using them to allow you to grind through the moments where you don't have as much access to dopamine then that's not that's not fulfilling that purpose it's feeding into a different purpose it's feeding into the pursuit of, of quick rewards and quick hits of dopamine and I don't know this is one of those things that like we always forget about but honestly like it's a low key element that fitness gives you like tonight I have this work event I've already ran. That doesn't mean that I'm going to go and fucking, I don't know, eat a shit ton of food, eat a shit ton of fucking cookies, have a beer after with my coworkers. I mean, I might, but like, I'm not going to have a fucking shit ton. I'm not going to get hammered. I'm not going to like go back to my room and have a couple more. Like, no, I've got to get myself up in the morning around 5.30 so that I can do my workout at 6 or earlier, hopefully, right? I'm going to get my 6 to 7 hours of sleep or more, right? Like, all of my goals are in the pursuit of my wellness now on this work trip instead of Oh, what's the fucking greasiest food? What's the fucking best beer? What's the, like, I don't know, 
where's like the funnest place to go and have a couple drinks. Instead of thinking that way, I'm thinking, how can I pay myself back with sleep, great food, and a workout in the morning? And ultimately, I'm gonna be better at work, I'm gonna be more present for my wife, I'm gonna be more present for my kids, I'm gonna be more in control of my life, right? I'm gonna have more of my bills paid on time, I'm gonna be fulfilling more of my errands on time, picking up groceries more, getting the medicine for my dog more on time, like keeping up with my life more when I'm paying myself back in, in health and wellness, right? The last part I need to figure out is getting a better job, making more money, working on my business, figuring out that financial element that maybe doesn't force me to drive up here twice a month and maybe helps take my health and wellness focus to the next level. Maybe I can train harder, maybe I can eat better, I can sleep more, maybe I can be a better dad, maybe I can be a better husband if I'm not doing these things where I'm forced to have to fucking grind, pissing away three hours of my life, driving to Los Angeles. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ride the rhythm of paying myself back in health and wellness through these grinds where I've have where I have to fucking drive up here and be away. And it's hard to be away. You know? Like that's why this is a grind to me. I'm not I'm not the kind of person that enjoys the enjoys to be around like a new area. I don't need I don't need to travel. I don't like need to be away from my wife. Like I just need to work out. I don't need to be away from my kids. I just need to work out. Like if I can get my fitness in, if I can get my training in, I'm down to hang out. I'm down I, like I, I like to hang out at the house, at the house. I think it's very like chill. But like I don't want to be like in new places all the time by myself. Like that shit that shit does not do me any sort of mental reward. So I feel like I feel like this is a grind. And I think there's been a couple of things that have happened and it's turned into a yap fest. We'll see if this even goes anywhere, but a couple of things that have happened while I've driven up here that, you know, a little bit hard on us. So number one, while my wife was pregnant with our boys, my wife got a little sick. Pretty really sick. Well, not a little sick, really sick. We both got food poisoning. I like was up here I think for two or three days of work. I like had to cancel the second half of what I was doing and like check myself in to help with her at the hospital. And then like that night, I'm like trying to log in after hospital hours, hospital visiting hours, and like do some work. And I fucking start throwing up. I fucking get what my wife had. And like, they're telling us my wife's gonna have to like deliver early. They're telling us there's no room in the fucking hospital. We're up there obviously by ourselves. Like, shit was crazy. We were worried that she was gonna have a miscarriage. Worst case scenario. Second thing that happened while I've been up here. I mean, obviously it's fine, my boys are healthy. It was fine. Second thing that happened while I've been up here. This was kind of hard to talk about. I lost my, I lost my baby girl. My baby girl, Bowie. Shout out to my baby girl. I love you so much, Bo. And she passed, like, literally at the house. And, like, I don't know, man. It's hard. I was, like, on the field when it happened. My wife called me. And I just thought to myself, like, what the fuck am I doing up here right now? Why the fuck am I not, like... 
in San Diego, like, I don't know, in a space where I could be there for my wife, for my, for my family, for my, for my baby girl Bowie at that time, I like literally couldn't even see her on her last day. One of the hardest things, man. One of the hardest things that I've like ever had to go through. And like I don't want to dismiss what my wife's like had to go through. Like she was her dog, obviously, in the first place. But we've been married for a little bit and she was at her wedding and I don't know. She was mine too. You know? And I was hers too. But like my wife was there, like by herself, overwhelmed with the boys. Like she probably felt guilty ten times as much as I did not being there in that moment. So uh, I can't even talk about it. And then recently, like also makes me feel better compared to that. My baby boy broke his arm, dude. Baby, baby Rem broke his arm. And, like, she was by herself, trying to take care of the boys. Just got off FaceTime with me. Boys are being wild on the couch. Probably, like, messing around with the phone. Fighting over the phone. Wife walks away. Remy falls off the couch. Boom. Arm broken. She goes, to, she goes to, like, try to get him to relax. He kind of, kind of relaxes. He, like, takes the bottle and stuff. He's ready to go to sleep. Next day, he wakes up, and he's, like, his arm, pointing at his arm and stuff. And his arm's broken. And I'm just like, fuck, man. I can't catch a fucking break being up here. And it's scary. It's like... What's going to make me happen next? But honestly, like... I'm trying to think of the positives, right? I try to think of the things that, like... I can control. And the things that I can't control. And there's a few things that I can't control with all of those things. One. My wife was going to get sick no matter what. If we were going to get forced into an early delivery... We were gonna first do an early delivery no matter what. Right? Two. Bowie was already sick. Bowie was already down. She was getting a little older. I had done a lot for her to like make the most of her life. Add years to her life if we could. You know? And like, you know, we don't live forever. So, we don't live forever. And then third, like, me and my wife, even though we're home, we both walk away from the boys in the living room all the time. Like, that could have happened while we were both home any day. Literally every single day they fall. And every day we both walk away from the room. So on any day, both of those things could have happened leading towards Remy breaking his arm. So, I can't beat myself up. You know? I gotta be positive. Because I want to manifest positive things for my family, manifest positive things for my life, manifest positive things for myself. And the more I sulk in the negative, the more I'm gonna potentially attract negativity the more toxic of a mindset I'm going to have, the further away I'm going to get from myself and, you know, creating powers, God, whatever you believe in, whatever it is, is the truth, um, spiritually. So, oh, whoa, 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 see, if I was negative, I would have been too close to that car. Um, so, long story short, I have felt that the pursuit of health and wellness and paying myself back to try to be the fittest person I can be and try to be the best 
player I can has made it ah. has made it harder to produce content, but made it easier for me to get through life's challenges. And honestly, thus it motivates me to produce a little bit more content. Um, so, yeah. In that little therapy session, that's why I get up and run at fucking 5.45 in the morning. That's why I work seven hours and then I fucking run 30 minutes, shower 30 seconds, be ready to start taking care of the boys, throw a little TV on, start throwing dinner on the plate, do a little more work while I finish cooking dinner, and then I stretch after I finish putting the boys to bed, right, at like 8.30, and then I do the dishes, and then I get up in the morning, and I do the thing again, right? I either run in the morning, I run at lunch, or I run at night, at like nine o'clock in the fucking p.m. And that's my life. And I drive up to LA twice a week, in between all of that. Twice a month, sorry. In between all of that. So, I felt that paying myself back in all these things and also resting, staying away from bullshit has helped me better myself long term. So, yeah. And honestly, like that little, this little content creation right now was great. Like mentally, I feel a lot better than I did as I was driving up here previously. And I'm already in Orange County. I made it to South OC. So, I've only got, like, what, another hour left? Hour and 15? Maybe a little more. Um, so, I'm gonna tap back in on this drive. Make sure people aren't cutting me off excessively. You know how it gets up here. People drive mad aggressive. Everybody's late to work. Same, honestly, though. So, I gotta be ready. Um, but yeah, we'll try to get some more content while we're up here. I don't know how we're going to cut that 20 minute long yap into something that fits into a video or if that 20 minute long yap is just a video itself. But if it is, make sure you like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this um, or not like this. I got a lot of other kinds of videos. I have videos where I play soccer. I have videos of my highlights. I have videos of different highlights. I see different things people do while I'm playing or while other people are playing. Um, so check out my stuff, check out my channel, make sure you like and comment on the shit you support. And honestly, just keep it moving if you don't. I, that's better for me, for you. For every negative thought, you gotta put some positive thoughts back in. So do it for yourself too. So anyway, Check us out in the next one, or check us out in the next part of this video, depending on how we cut this. Peace.